The KSAM Wake Up Morning Show. Southeast Texas forecast looking at a 30% chance of rain and a high of 78 today. 50-50 chance of storms overnight, 64. Tomorrow, maybe some sunshine and a high of 83. 68 and fog on KSAM. All right. Kane Brown, I can feel it. What are, where is he at up there? He is at number four now on the chart, so yeah, he is climbing. moving right on up there. Good stuff. Good song, All right, too. the KSAM Wake Up Morning Show rolling right along here. Brian and Tracy, and uh, we are giving away tickets all this week. You can text for a chance to win. And it doesn't matter if you've already texted in uh, uh, since Monday, you're then still you're, you're still in the drawing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, uh, so uh, you have until Friday to see if you're going to win those rusty chippy tickets. It's going to be at the uh, Walker County Fairgrounds this weekend. And then next weekend is the Still Creek Stampede PRCA Rodeo benefiting Still Creek Ranch and all the great ministry and work that they do for children in crisis. Uh, but it's a PRCA Pro Rodeo at the Brazos County Expo Center in Bryan next weekend, uh, 15th and 16th. We've got details about all of this over on our uh, webpage. Go to our hometown happenings page at ksam1017.com. But let's say congratulations to our winners this morning. We've got... Pamela Walker, congratulations on your Rusty Chippy. Two, what is it? Two tickets? Two tickets to the Rusty Chippy show there for Pamela. There you go. Way yeah. to go. And then Penny Fowler is going to the rodeo, the Still, Still Creek Stampede PRCA. All right. Congratulations, Pamela and Penny from all of us here at KSAM. Scotty McCreary with Cab and a Solo on KSAM. Carlos hanging out with you on this Monday morning. Weather forecast coming up. Also got John Barty and Morgan Wallen on the way as well. Well, there's a wellness brand that just released the ranking of the most and least stressed states in America. It's based on 16 factors that are grouped into four categories, money stress, work stress, health stress, and family stress. Our friends in Tennessee was named the most stressed state. Following them at number two, Alabama, number three, Oklahoma, number four, Louisiana, number five, Nevada, number six, South Carolina, number seven, Georgia, number eight, Arizona, number nine, West Virginia, and number 10, Indiana. Uh, The top 10 least stressed are, and I'll go in reverse, number 10, Washington, number 9, Wyoming, number 8, Idaho, number 7, Wisconsin, number 6, South Dakota, number 5, Minnesota, number 4, Nebraska, number 3, Iowa, number 2, Utah, and the number 1 least stressed state is North Dakota. Notice how the Lone Star State was not on there, so we're somewhere in the middle. But don't stress. It's a brand new week. Let's make it good. Play Walker, live until I die. Part of 90s at noon on 101.7 KSAM. Your Southeast Texas weather forecast is coming up. I'm Carlos Zimmerman, and here's a food story for you. It's a snack story today. A market research company released a map that showed the most searched for snack in every U.S. state. And the results were pretty bland. Rice Krispie Treats were number one in 18 different states. Doritos was the preferred snack in 16 states. Cheetos was the top snack in eight states. So 42 of the 50 states picked one of those. There were a few slightly more unique picks. Fritos and Chex Mix both carried three states. Lay's potato chips were the top pick in two states. And New Jersey went with Cheerios. Yes. Now that adds up to 51 because they included Washington, D.C. A few other favorites that didn't rank number one, but were in the top five in a number of states. Goldfish, Pringles, Tostitos, Starburst, and Chips Ahoy. You know what the shocker is that not on this list? Oreos. I'm surprised. I mean, they have them double stuff, sometimes triple stuff, or mega stuff, however you want to do it. But man, you can't go wrong with Oreos. No one no one wants it in their top five? Come on, get out of here. Radney Foster and Nobody Wins, part of 90s at noon on 101.7 KSAM. I am Carlos Zimmerman, or as some people call me, the Z-Man. Hope you all are enjoying your Wednesday thus far. Coming up, Tanya Tucker and Diamond Rio, plus your weather forecast. All right. Here's your second food story of the day. Remember, I talked about snackage yesterday. I'm going to talk about it again. Here are the top 10 most nostalgic snacks of all time. Rice Krispie Treat cereal came back out in the 90s, got pulled from the shelves at some point. Someone launched a petition on Change.org in 2019 to bring them back, and around 30,000 people have signed it. Waffle Crisp cereal got discontinued in 2018. Post did bring it back, though, in 2021. You remember those Orbitz drinks? Flavored water with little edible balls floating in it came out in 1996. They immediately flopped and were gone by 1998. I was born in 98, so I never got to see it. Um, Let's see, moving through this list. Crystal Pepsi debuted in 1992 and it bombed. Still got some diehard fans out of it though. They did have brought it back for a limited time in 2016, 2018, and 2022. And guys, 
It's delicious. It's just clear. Crystal clear. Uh, Tab. Came out in 1963. One of the first diet sodas on the market got discontinued three years ago. Bagel Bites. They haven't gone away except in Canada. Our friends up north haven't been able to get them the past two years. Oreo Cakesters. Basically a whoopie pie. You can still get those too. Nabisco brought them back in 2022. And the number one nostalgic snack of all time, Dunkaroos. They're one you can still get. They got discontinued in 2012, but General Mills brought them back in 2020. What's your favorite nostalgic snack? Jason Aldean on KCM, your hometown radio station. Good afternoon. I'm Big Lynn Edwards. Your forecast coming up in just a few moments. So here's the latest. Have you heard about this? Three new food options hitting the grocery stores anytime. Uh, and of these, is there one you really want to try the most? And certainly, is there one you're going to want to try the least? All right, let's see here. Uh, the first one, cheese it flavored ranch dressing. So Hidden Valley just announced it ahead of National Ranch Dressing Day, which is on March the 10th. Uh, it hit stores nationwide this month. They say it's something that actually fans of ranch dressing came up with. Also, uh, grilled cheese flavored tomato soup. Now, if dipping a real grilled cheese in your soup is too much, Campbell's doing a limited edition run. So if you want to try it, check it out on the soup aisle. Uh huh. And uh, let's see, last but not least, Oscar Mayer meatless hot dogs. They're called Called not hot dogs, and they're made of plant-based meat, so a little different than veggie dogs. Uh, their parent company, Kraft Heinz, has a plant-based offshoot that is called the Not Company. So the Not Hot Dogs are of those three. Are there any that you're not going to try? Yeah, no, not hot dogs for me. What about you, Bailey Zimmerman? Here on 101.7 K Sam. So, I got another story for y'all. Apparently, there are some people who will push a store's return policy to the max to get whatever they want out of the situation. Others don't want to abuse the system. That's me. I I don't... Half the time, I don't even end up returning things. I just say, you know what, whatever. If I'm, I'm going to find a use for it later or end up, end up trying to sell it and then I never sell it. But either way. <laughs> Apparently, a woman is going viral on social media for bragging about how she returned her couch to, to Costco. That doesn't sound that weird until you put in the context that she used it, had it, bought it more than two years ago. Costco is a very, very generous return policy, we'll say, which doesn't mention many restrictions other than electronics, jewelry, alcohol, tires, and batteries. The woman Jackie says that she was intimidated about asking for a refund just because she, quote, didn't like it anymore but she adds quote who cares return it they have an awesome return policy she didn't even have the receipt still she just told them when she bought it they looked it up in their system and then credited her credit card for the purchase price which is about nine hundred dollars i wish every store did this are you kidding me <laughs> it might actually let me make me want to return some more Naturally, however, the reaction online to this was a bit mixed. Some people online are commending Jackie for working the system to her favor. They argue that Costco gets money back from manufacturers for returns. You're already paying an annual membership fee to shop there anyway, so they're not necessarily losing money on it. Others are slamming her, saying that people who abuse the system eventually force companies to make returns harder for everybody else. They add it, waste employees' time, making the lines longer for everybody else. And it ultimately raises prices for everyone else. And I can see that part of the argument as well, but if the policy don't say it, then do it. Congratulations. Proud of you.